As children adjust to school schedules for the first time in over a year, parents, you might be thinking about the return of stricter bedtimes and a more regular sleep schedule. This is a difficult but important tug of war with your kids, and here's why. New from the American Heart Association, between 1 and 6% of kids have obstructive sleep apnea, which leads to sleep disruptions and later in life, an increased risk for heart disease. Joining me now is Dr. Carissa Baker Smith, American Heart Association volunteer expert. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So what is sleep apnea and basically how do kids get it? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Sleep apnea is basically an event where you have pauses in your breathing at night. Uh, so for kids, it's having two breaths that really aren't delivered effectively during sleep. You actually hear a noticeable pause uh, in their breathing. Um, parents can report that. Um, for adults, it can be as, as long as 10 seconds of, of no uh, gas exchange uh, while they're asleep. And um, as you mentioned, about one to 6% of kids have sleep apnea, uh, or so we think, but certainly there are kids who are at greater risk for obstructive sleep apnea. And some of our kids who have certain facial features um, as well as a, a obesity, and we, and we use that term in a medical way, uh, meaning uh, a weight for height that's in excess uh, of, of where it should be. Uh, those kids can also be at risk for um, greater risk for obstructive sleep apnea. And how do you tell if your child really does have sleep problems? Yeah, that's a really good question as well. I think having a high index of suspicion, so paying attention to not just what time your child goes to sleep because that's sleep duration, um, but walking into the room, do you hear a gas uh, habitual snoring? So more than three nights per week, the child snores while they're sleeping. Um, what about if you hear uh, pauses uh, in their uh, breathing at night? So those can all be signs uh, that a child has sleep apnea and you wanna have that conversation with their pediatrician uh, and sometimes referral to a sleep specialist um, to have further evaluation. But I wanna make one other point. Sometimes the manifestations of sleep apnea are what happens during the day. Um, children who have difficulty focusing, maybe they're not performing as well in school because the quality of their sleep is affected by the number of episodes where they're not able uh, to have that proper gas exchange while they're sleeping. And so they're waking up um, at night. And, and so it's very disruptive sleep and it's and affecting their ability to perform um, and to stay focused the next day. So that can also be a sign. Yeah, I think that's a really important point to make. And I'm wondering what can parents do if they suspect, you know, I think my child might have sleep apnea. Let's say they've made an appointment, but in the interim, if they're waiting mm -hmm. for that appointment, waiting to see a sleep specialist, if there's something they can do night to night. Yeah. So really what uh, the way that I got involved in, 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 in asking these questions is really a comprehensive assessment of a child's total health. And so I mentioned that obesity can be a risk factor for uh, obstructive sleep apnea. So parents really uh, want to focus on you know, their child's diet and exercise routine. Um, are they getting, you know, the quality foods that they that they need? Not a lot of processed food, but more fruits and vegetables. Are they exercising for at least five hours a week, ideally? Um, you know, those are all things that can be helpful um, because even if they do have enlarged tonsils or adenoids that are contributing to uh, the presence of the sleep, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, you know, obesity still is a major risk factor uh, even after tonsils and adenoids are removed. So those are some things that parents can do in the interim. But if they suspect that, it, that their child has it, they really do want to seek um, uh, the a consultation with an expert. And sometimes that just means a child going in for an overnight sleep study um, to have that evaluation performed. Okay, great information, Dr. Carissa Baker-Smith. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.